government has been accused of misleading the public with a dodgy dossier of exaggerated and incomplete information to justify the second lockdown in England. It comes as a group of around 500 scientists and doctors claim official data is exaggerating the current risk posed by COVID. Well, joining us now, Professor Devi Sridhar, who, as we know, argues the lockdown <laughs> is justified because there are still hundreds of people dying. But former Cabinet Minister David Mellor says the public have been completely misled and people are losing faith in the government. Uh, David Mellor and Devi Sridhar, Professor Devi Sridhar, very good to talk to both of you. David Mellor, I, I think I agree people are losing faith, but calling it a dodgy dossier of information or that it is not credible is something else completely. What, what do you make of the evidence for the second lockdown? Well, let me say, first of all, lots of people are saying this. It's not just me, it's my own. Certainly, the evidence on which it was based... Okay, David, already... can, we, I just, can you just pause for a moment? We, ju we just can't quite hear your sound properly. Let's see if we can get that fixed, because what you have we to say... We don't want to hear a partially muted David Miller. So we're going to get your sound correct. We'll go to Debbie first and then come back to you, yeah. David. We'll sort the sound out. Yeah. Debbie, um, it seemed to me, I've got to say, that we're almost in the worst of all worlds right now. We're in a position where a second national lockdown has been ordered but a lot of people are simply ignoring it. I was out and about in London at the weekend. It seemed like business as usual, same traffic, same number of people around, a lot of places open. It didn't feel like a lockdown at all. Yeah, I think this points to a fundamental lack of strategy by the UK government of how do you replace lockdown with other measures? We shouldn't still have to be in these cycles. There are other parts of the world back to normal. And what we really need to have is a focus on why is testing and tracing not working? How do we support people so they actually isolate? So is it how do you manage isolation financially, emotionally, and using hotel rooms like New York City has done? And finally, real border measures. There's no point locking down people if all you're going to do is keep reseeding infections from abroad if people are able to fly into airports and, um, you know, get into our kind of go through communities without testing or quarantine. I want to put to you, Professor Shreed, uh, hopefully we'll get David Mellor back in just a moment. But one of... OK, we have go. got him back. Let's so, go David Mellor, what, what, what are you concerned about with the evidence for the lockdown? Well, the evidence of lockdown is grossly exaggerated. For instance... The suggestion that 4,000 people, worst case, were going to die every day is already discredited. And within a few days of the announcement based on it being made to lock us down, uh, they said they no longer relied on that. And the 1,500 central estimate of people dying every day has already been cut by more than a third. And if Boris Johnson had bothered to look at the evidence last Sunday, uh, Sunday of last week, when he, what well, before he made the announcement, on the methodology that was being put before us, um, they were predicting a thousand people would die, and in fact, it was only two hundred. So uh, the, it, it, it follows what Professor Carl Hennigan of Oxford University says: it is the trend within the, the government to exaggerate worst-case scenarios in order to get things done consistently. They've exaggerated the number of deaths. They've exaggerated the pressure on NHS hospitals. And they've exaggerated the number of cases. In the meanwhile, the one thing that these scientists don't really want to address is the consequences for the British economy, which fell 20 percent in the second quarter of this year because of the lockdown and is going to fall even further because of this lockdown. OK, let's bring back Devi on this. Uh, I mean, there is a point there that, you know, I, I think there is a need for this kind of lockdown again, given the numbers. However, if those numbers are not transparent and not believable, and the government's already pulling back on some of them, that's incredibly damaging to public confidence in what the government's trying to make people do. Yeah, I agree with that. I really think it should have been two messages from the government when they set out the you know, case for why they were putting in these restrictions. And it's really coming down to hospitalizations. And this is where Simon Stevens made a strong case as head of NHS England of what was happening in hospitals, because your death rate will rise if people cannot get the care they need. So right now, these restrictions are trying to keep the burden off of health services and off of doctors, nurses and health staff. And the second thing I would say is we have a classic prevention paradox. If the government moves early and puts in place restrictions, we're obviously not going to see the case numbers and the deaths because they've prevented that crisis. But they're going to be blamed for overreacting. But if they do nothing or the delay, as we saw in March, and we have deaths, and we had, yeah, we had tens of thousands of deaths in Britain to COVID already, then they're blamed for these deaths, saying, how could you be so irresponsible? So it's kind of a lose-lose for governments, whether you react 
react or whether you don't. But what we need is clarity, and what we're not getting is clarity, and I think you both make very good points. Thank you both very much indeed.